We all have special and important stories to tell. We all have memories that we want to pass down to the next generation. But how many of us actually take the time to put our stories into words? How many of us actually have a handwritten legacy to pass down? Well, this morning, we're going to help you put your story on paper in a wonderful and creative way. Joining us is Michael McQueen, creator of Memento, My Life in Stories. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you so much. This, when it came to my desk, I was flipping through it and I was, what a great, idea. I'm a journaler, but this isn't quite the same thing as a journal. What inspired you to create uh, a way for people to put their life into, into words? I suppose it's like a lot of ideas. I suppose they come out of tragedy or huge opportunity, and for me it was tragedy. And um, about five, almost six years ago, my father passed away quite suddenly. He was um, 51, so it was one of those very heart young. attacks. Yeah, very young, like no warning, um, huge shock, huge surprise. Um, but a few days after he passed away, we, we made the discovery of a notebook in his desk and it was a notebook in which he'd been filling out stories and memories and experiences and sort of bits of wisdom from his life um, and most of it had never come up in conversation before wow. and um, it was amazing to learn so much about dad and his life particularly as a younger person because I can only imagine him as a father at the age he was mm -hmm. and so I created Memento to I guess encourage parents to do that to take the time to write down stories and memories to, to pass on for their kids. How did learning about your father like you just said in a, in a completely different light seeing him as a three-dimensional person not just yeah. as the father how did that change your perspective? I think that the big thing is I realized how similar we were you know, I think growing up, you'd like to think you're very different to your parents sure. and you do everything you can to rebel in some ways against them and become your own person. And I, I was 22 when he passed away, so I was sort of at the age where I could start to embrace the fact that we might actually be a bit similar. And it was amazing learning about his interests and personality and teenage years. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was really special and that was stuff that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. Did that have an impact on how you organized this book? The great thing that I want viewers, you know, to know about this is that it's not just blank pages for you to write on. You actually ask a series of thoughtful questions that force you to be introspective and force you to look at events in your life that you may not otherwise. From your father's notebook that you found, did it in inspire the way that you set this up? Absolutely. So the, the, what I wanted to do was set out questions that would prompt parents to reflect on their life, but not just the really flippant or the really serious, but the whole range. So um, in the book, there's 130 questions that deal with topics from, you know, what was your first kiss like? Right, um, right through to more profound questions like, you know, what, what's your greatest regret? or what makes a good friend, or who are your five closest friends and why. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and, and they're set out in five different sections. So dealing with younger years, values and beliefs, family heritage, and then hopes and dreams. You also have uh, your book set up with beautiful quotes. Mm. There's some illustrations, things like that. Where did you find the quotes and how did you put those in the, in the order that you did? Um, I'm a bit of a quote junkie. Okay. Um, I, love, I love reading something that clarifies something I've already thought but couldn't put into words. And so I had a whole p pile of quotes already. So they sort of went in but what I was looking for were quotes that I could put in that would maybe spark thoughts mm -hmm. so if there was a question about marriage or success or finances mm -hmm. and people's experiences with those I'd have a quote next to it that would I guess get them into that mode of thinking so I just did a lot of googling basically. How many people would you say actually uh, without the help of something like Memento mm -hmm. how many people actually put pen to paper and write down their stories do you know the statistics on that? Yeah we did some research about two years ago because I guess my work professionally is mainly with parents. Um, so I work a lot with parents, helping them understand their teenagers, adolescents, Generation Y, and helping them connect with them. And so when I'd run seminars with parents, um, I'd ask them, you know, how many of you have actually written your stories down to pass on to your own kids? And this was over the space of about 12 months, probably maybe 10,000, 20,000 parents, and we found only 4%. Only four. Only four. And I think it's that thing of, you know, I, I want to do it one day, I will do it one day, so they say, but you know, life's busy. I mean, the whole idea of the balancing act, it's so full, 
that often I think parents don't get to it because life is just so manic, you know, doing the immediate things, the urgent things, we don't get around to the important things like passing on stories. And you mentioned parents doing this. I think mm. a lot of times you think of maybe the grandmother or the mm. mother passing down the stories. But with this, because it is so intimate, this probably makes it easier for the, the males in yeah. families to get their stories out because they don't necessarily communicate through verbal storytelling. Of course. And can you imagine sitting down with your dad or your grandfather and saying, tell me your life story. You know, right. Most of them, that's very confronting. And for a lot of mothers and grandmothers, that would be too, partly because it's emotionally confronting, but also where do you start? Like, what do you include? What do you not include? And so I guess, for, I think particularly for men, but you know, for both genders, it is something that's quite simple to start, just jotting down thoughts that may be confronting to talk about in person. Well, you've done a beautiful job of setting this up and making it a, an easy thing for people to do and a great idea you know, as a gift to a family member. Thank you so much for joining us this morning and telling us a little more about it. My pleasure. Thank you. It's been great having you as a guest. Now, if you would like to find out more about Michael or if you would like your own copy of Memento, My Life and Stories, so that you can leave your legacy for generations to come, just go to mementobook.com.